Are oh, your Pisimbidiums not flowering? You bought them with the most magnificent blooms on them that lasted for months and months. And now after a year, two years, they still haven't rebloomed again. Well, that's a problem that we can overcome. Let's go through the culture sheet for Cymbidiums and see what might be your answer to get yours to rebloom. And welcome to the Nature Company. If this is the kind of information you're interested in, please hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and that notification bell to be notified of all our upcoming videos so you don't miss out on a thing. So we'll start off with just a brief explanation of some of the different cymbidiums. The majority of the cymbidiums you'll probably find are the ones from the highlands of India and Burma. That's where most of them come from. There are also dwarf varieties that come from China and Japan. And of course, the Australian varieties will take completely different cultural requirements that uh, we have another video on. I'll link that down below. So we'll mainly be dealing with the miniatures and the highland cymbidiums. So these cymbidiums from the highlands in India and Myanmar generally grow in what would be considered relatively cool but bright conditions and they're in the monsoon areas so they're used to getting lots of rain at certain times of year so and then the ones from china and, and japan are generally miniatures and they are a lot more accepting of warmer conditions than what the larger symbidiums are so let's get to the culture sheet uh, the which are the cultural requirements for your cymbidiums that hopefully now we can give you an idea of why your cymbidiums might not be flowering and what you can do to get them to flower and if you're having a problem with bud drop where your buds are aborting and falling off going yellow then that will get to at the end and give you some ideas on how to prevent that from happening there are two main factors that affect the flowering of your cymbidiums and temperature is one of them. Cymbidiums are tolerant of a wide variety of different temperatures. This is one of the things that attracts a lot of beginners to them because they seem to manage quite easily out in the garden. Their ideal temperatures range from nighttime temperatures 10 to 12 degrees and daytime temperatures around 24 to 27 degrees. That's in Celsius. In Fahrenheit it's 50 to 55 degree Fahrenheit nighttime and 75 to 80 degrees daytime temperatures. But they are quite tolerant of higher and lower temperatures they can tolerate light frost without causing any damage or reducing the flowering and anything below minus two or three degrees is going to start damaging any of the developing flower sparks if it starts getting towards frost point it's probably better to bring them indoors keep them out of harm's way just to ensure that you don't damage your plant and on the opposite side of the scale in summer times if your temperatures are reaching 32 35 degrees it's best to try and find novel ways to keep your plant cool using humidity trays or evaporation trays so that's 90 to 95 degrees fahrenheit and if your evening temperatures in summer are over 21 degrees approximately 70 75 degrees fahrenheit then you're going to also want to find a way to keep them cool in the evenings because you You'll get malformation of your developing flowering spikes at this point so we want to try and reduce those evening temperatures in late summer by watering in the evenings to allow for that evaporation to take place keeping the plant cool in some places even icing works well where you can just throw a handful of ice cubes down into the plant in the the evening time before you go to bed and that will also help keep the temperature down in the evening so that those buds that form the inflorescence can develop properly. So by doing this, you're hoping to get your evening temperatures down to about 10 or 15 degrees Celsius, which is approximately 50 or 60 degrees Fahrenheit to ensure that those inflorescence develop properly. And that's in the late summer that you want to start doing that. Also, they like to get a fair temperature differential between day and night temperatures during that period to really get those inflorescence set properly. So generally you're looking at about a, a 12 degree difference that should do the trick. Um, if you're looking Fahrenheit, that's approximately 20 degree Fahrenheit change. So that should be enough to really get that cymbidium to, to push those flower spikes. And again, with the miniatures, you're gonna have a better chance chance to get them to flower in warmer areas whereas you're not going to have to ask them as much in the late summer because they are far more tolerant of the warmer conditions they can take almost a, a 10 degree higher temperature difference than what the cool flowering cymbidiums will take and still produce their amazing flower spikes and humidity is one of the easy things with cymbidiums they don't rely on those high humidities that other orchids often need. So between 40 and 60% is generally perfect for them, which means they do well in a wide variety of outdoor settings. And also 
If you're going to be growing them indoors, that should be easy enough attained as well by using an evaporation tray. Also, one of the things that helps with their humidity requirements is that they only need those higher humidity levels during their growing season, which is the spring and summer, which is often when there is higher humidity levels around. And during the season that they flower, you'll find generally there is a lower humidity level anyway, so it works out perfectly for cymbidiums. And now after temperature, light is probably the next biggest factor determining cymbidium flowering. What you want out of your cymbidium is you want them to have these nice bright green leaves. It doesn't matter if there's just the slightest bit of yellowing on them, that's almost perfect. That means they're getting enough light. If you're growing them under cover, you want only 20% shade from them. Otherwise, if you're growing them out in the garden, then just giving them midday shade should be perfect, allowing it full sun in the morning and in the afternoon. If you're in a cooler climate, then you can give them full sun all day. This light factor is one of the reasons that they can be difficult to flower indoors because often you're not able to supply them with enough light indoors unless you've got huge big windows that will allow in enough light for them. Growing them indoors in insufficient light, you get a slow growth, inconsistent growth patterns, and this makes it very difficult to get your flowering. This doesn't mean you can't enjoy your cymbidium while it's flowering by bringing it indoors because it needs the high light conditions, especially when it's in its growing phase. When it's in its flowering phase, it can accept those lower light conditions that it would get in winter anyway with the shorter light periods. So we can grow it outdoors. When the frosts start coming, if you're in a frost area, then you can bring it indoors. So those flower spikes at the bottom should have developed nicely and they'll continue to grow. And you'll get your full set of flowers coming while you have your plant indoors and you shouldn't have any problems there. When it's finished flowering, you know your frost period is over. We just remove it back outdoors to get all that good air circulation, all that good light and everything that it needs to be ready for the next set. So all we're going to do while it's indoors is put it in a nice bright spot in a coolish area where it's not going to get that direct blast of heat from a, a heater or anything. Now we have dealt with the main factors that are preventing your cymbidium from flowering. There's just a few other things we need to look at as well. The air movement. Air movement is essential for cymbidiums. They like to get all that fresh air moving in through and around their leaves. Otherwise, we can start getting problems like botrytis and fungal attacks and things. And that then will then obviously kill your flowering spike as it starts to come out the ground. That's one of the reasons that we keep it outdoors, that we can have that constant breeze blowing through it. And then when it's flowering, we can bring it in and try and put it in an area where it's still going to be allowed some air movement without those cold and hot drafts blowing on it. As mentioned earlier, these are from monsoon areas that get torrential rains during their growing season. So they actually quite water loving plants. That doesn't mean we were gonna keep the pot soggy. We're still gonna to have to put an excellent well-drained media here. And how often you water it all depends on the media that you're using in your pot. Whether you're using just plain fir bark or whether you're using a soil-based media, just check on how quick your drainage is and water accordingly. Often once a week is enough for this during the growing season and then perhaps once every second week, depending on how moist the media remains, that we'll need to water once a, every second week or, or once a month during the winter periods. But they don't like to dry out completely, so we're never really going to get them to the point of dryness as we would with a cattleya. We're gonna keep these on the slightly more moist side. And because they've got such a large root mass, we're not going to keep them damp and soggy because that's gonna cause all of those roots in there to rot. So we've just gotta try and balance our, our watering with our air movement, our light and our temperatures. And also remember in warmer climates, watering at night, especially on the leaves, can help bring your temperatures down so that we can get those flower spikes activated. And when watering your, your cymbidiums, remember they're from high rainfall areas. So rather run your water through the pot until it's really pouring out the bottom to ensure that your complete root ball has been moistened and your water is just not running down the sides of the pots. So 
give them a good solid watering. And when it comes to feeding your cymbidiums, we give a balanced fertilizer right through the year, but we add extra nitrogen in during the growing seasons, starting from early spring right the way through to the end of summer. We're going to be adding in that extra nitrogen to ensure that those growths are strong and ready to produce those amazing flower spikes that it's going to get. And then as we head into autumn, we're going to start adding the extra potassium and remove the extra nitrogen. During the growing season, we're going to be feeding our cymbidium every week. They're fairly heavy feeders, they grow relatively quickly and they can produce tons of flowers. So to get those pseudo bulbs big and strong, to provide the plant with enough food to push out all those flower spikes, we feed them a fair amount. By doing this every week with an organic fertilizer, we use it at full strength. With a chemical fertilizer, we half the strength. But always remember then flushing your pots, especially with those chemical fertilizers. So again, once a week during summer, every second week during winter. And now that you've been feeding and watering your plants so well, and they're growing up a storm, we're going to need to repot them. This we do immediately after blooming. We want to do it straight after blooming so that as these new growths start occurring, we can put them into their new pots and their roots that they're going to produce are going to settle in nicely. So always remember, we want at least three to five bulbs on each division to ensure that we get good growth out of it and that it isn't set back for a year without flowering. And remember, cymbidiums produce large root volumes. So we like to put in a, a deeper, longer pot so that it gives it space for all those roots to grow. Okay, I promised you I'd tell you why you get the bud fall or the abortion of the buds. There's several reasons that this can occur. Some of the main ones are warm drafts that can come at the wrong point and that will actually just cause all of the buds on your flowering spikes to turn yellow, curl up their tails and fall off your plant. Terrible sad sight to see. So things like adiabatically heated breezes that come down through certain times of the year can just cause your whole flower spike to abort all its buds. Often it's come from nice cool temperatures that it enjoys and then suddenly gets that warm heated breeze through it and it really doesn't enjoy that. So as it starts to form its flower spikes with all the buds coming up, keep it in areas where, where it's not going to be affected by winds such as that or direct breezes from heaters and things like that which will cause the same problem. Also sudden hot temperatures will cause your plant to lose all its buds. Along with this is if you move it indoors into an area where the light conditions are unfavorable, you're going to get the same problem. All your buds are going to start yellowing and dying off and it will be too late to fix it. So find that nice bright spot for it to keep it happy. So I'm afraid it's not only the hot drafts that are going to cause this bud fall to happen, but also if it's in the path of an air conditioner and that air conditioner breeze is blowing on it all the time, you're gonna get the same effect. So keep your plant nice and protected from situations such as these. Also indoors, so also indoors, especially when using things like air conditioners and heaters, your humidity levels can also get too low and that will be another problem causing your bud drop. So there you go, changes, Dramatic changes in temperature, either up or down, or complete lack of humidity are going to be your main factors. If you're sticking to your fertilizer regime, you're not going to have a problem with bud drop from under fertilization. But ensuring that you're flushing through your orchid, you're also not going to have the same problem through over fertilization. So keeping your cymbidiums flowering is just purely a matter of keeping your plant well balanced. If you've done everything else right and your buds are still dropping off, then the only problem that could be left is you've been overwatering and you've rotted all your roots. Then you know it's time to pull that out the pot immediately, check to see what's happening in underneath and repot. So they can be a good indicator of what is happening with your plant. Better to save your plant and have flowers in the coming years than lose your plant altogether. And thank you for watching. If you have found any of this information helpful, please hit that like button 
and that subscribe button if you haven't subscribed already hit that notification bell bing bong to be notified of all our upcoming videos so you don't miss out a thing help us grow as we help your plants grow